In this video I'll be determining the terminal velocity of ball bearings dropped into this cylinder of oil. In order to do that I'm going to measure the time taken for the ball to move through a known distance. I'm going to use the scale markings on the measuring cylinder to do that. Because these don't correspond with length measurements but volume measurements, I've calibrated them by measuring them with a, meter, with a half metre rule. Uh, so my actual calibration came out as 40 of these small scale markings with 62 millimetres. So each one scale marking here is 1.55 millimetres. And I'm going to drop it through a total of 50 of those, which is 77.5 millimetres. So I will t uh, reposition the camera so that I can video the ball bearing falling through the oil. And then I'll use the video playback to find the initial time to, to start taking measurements. And then the final time to fall through 77.5 millimetres. I'll then use that to work out the velocity using the constant velocity equation, S equals VT. So I'll reposition the camera now, uh, get the footage, and then we'll calculate the terminal velocity for the ball bearings. I've repositioned the camera now so that we've got a close-up of the measuring cylinder. I'll be dropping the ball bearings in at the top so that hopefully they fall behind this scale here so that we can then measure the time it takes to fall over a known distance. During this section here, before they reach the scale, they should reach terminal velocity and that will enable us to take measurements anywhere on the scale. This is a picture of the ball bearing there. So we'll do this a couple of times and see how we go. Okay, so I've dropped all the ball bearings now. You'll probably notice that there is a bit of a perspective issue here, or a parallax issue. The camera lens is about the height of the 190 mark here. That puts it roughly halfway between the top 10 that I'll be wanting to use, the scale markings, either the top 10 or from 240 to 140. Uh, the, uh, so I have introduce a bit of a limitation there, I'm not being able to look directly at where I want to start and where I finish at the time the ball crosses those points. However, um, I think using the camera playback will be more accurate than relying on my um, me actually watching the balls directly and noting a time be far more accurate this way. So bit of a comment on limitations there. Let's see what data we get. I've now analysed the video data and been able to work out the value for the terminal velocity. The first thing is that out of the, drop, the three drops that I conducted, the first one, the ball was moving too far in the horizontal direction. So I've ignored that one and taken the last two so that I can get an average value for the terminal velocity. The first stage of my calculations was to check if the ball and where the ball reached terminal velocity. So I, I took some frames out of the video and I'll add those in as screenshots to the video for the top section. So I, I took a couple of adjacent frames out of the video at the top section, noted the height that the ball was at and the time at which it was there and then went to the next frame noting the time and the height there so I could work out a rough value for the terminal velocity sorry for the velocity of the ball at that point. Did that for three different sets of three different pairs of frame at the top and then to double check I took a pair down the bottom here. So if I got a couple of values up here that were the same and they were the same as down the bottom of the cylinder then I could deduce that it was at terminal velocity because it hadn't changed over that period of time. Now that was just a check to see if it was at terminal velocity and if so where and I found that it was at about 228 on the scale markings here of the measuring cylinder. 
in order to calculate a more accurate value for the terminal velocity, I then took a frame from near the top where it was at, at terminal velocity and near the bottom, or about 50 of these divisions below, took that whole distance and the difference in time to work out the average velocity over that time. And that's what I've used for my terminal velocity. I'll go through that calculation in a moment. Now to take length measurements from a measuring cylinder, I've had to calibrate the scale markings on here with length. These, go, these are measurements for millimetres of volume, and I measured 40 of these at 62 millimetres. So that means, it means each marking on here corresponds to 1.55 millimetres. I've called each marking a division. So one division is 1.55 millimetres. This scale goes up in twos, so if I take a measurement from 250 to 200, then that's a change of 50 millimetres, but only 50 over 2, so 25 divisions. So going from 250 to 200 is 25 divisions, which is uh, 50 over 2. So in the calculations that I'll show, that's why I've divided by 2. So let's do the calculation for the terminal velocity. Uh, the, so it's height 1, or x1, is 228, and x2, so it's at the highest point it's 228, and then sometime later it reaches 126. So delta x is 228 minus 126, and that is equal to 51 divisions. So, oh yeah, I divided by 2. 51 divisions. And that is equal to 51 times 1.55 millimetres, which is 79.05. That's the displacement, change in displacement for the ball over that time. And T1, so this was at 57.32. The I could only measure to the nearest hundredth of a second for the, from the video frames. And it's 57.52 seconds. So change in time is that minus that. So it's 0 0.20 seconds. Velocity is the rate change of displacement. So 79.05. That's in millimetres, so I'm going to convert that to metres. That equals 0.305 meters per second. And that was my value, my value for the first drop that I measured for the terminal velocity. That's how I've determined terminal velocity for the ball dropped into a tube of water.